Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Mark on Motoring. In this video we've got the rear bumper off one of the 500s and we're going to do a repair to the bumper. The um, bumper had had a smart repair prior to me owning the vehicle and that has since failed. So as you can see here the um, paint has basically chipped away. So we're going to use some uh, wet and dry paper initially just to rub that down. We want to get this all um, rub back nice and smooth before we do any paint on the bumper. You can also see I've removed part of the plastic trim as well um, which is basically just an imitation grill um, and reflector. That came away quite easily once the bumper was off. It was just a case of um, basically squeezing a few clips and prying that out with a trim tool. It's also given me an opportunity to clean the area behind as well because um, basically there is a lot of um, road dirt that gets thrown up and it all collects behind there. As you can see there we've just got the arc around the edge where the um, paint chipped away in a chunk. We've also got um, a few other areas that are not so good on here as well. Lots of uh, orange peel. Basically as I say I think they've repainted that corner and just not done a very good job at all. There are also some areas that were scratched across the middle of the bumper here. Now, I don't really want to go to the extent of repainting the, the whole bumper. So all we're going to do is try and level that off because the scratch that you see is basically where the light uh, refracts off that edge on the paint where the scratch is. So we, uh, the aim is to wet and dry that to smooth it off and then we'll um, compound that and polish it later. So what I'm doing here is there, um, there's some deep scratches on the edge of the bumper. Again, I don't want to re fully repaint that area. So all I've done is I've used a cocktail stick just to try and touch that in. Um, something that I then did off camera um, was just to, again, wet and dry to rub that smooth. When we uh, compound and polish later, that should be invisible. Again, off camera, I've masked off the area, but what I've done is I've done a, a sort of a rolled edge on the masking paper just to um, basically try and help me blend that paint in to the old paint, um, but keep the area quite localised. I've used a plastic primer first, and then I've done the same thing passing over with the uh, Electronica Blue uh, Metallic, which is what the colour is on this vehicle. So while that paint's drying, I've turned my attention to the vehicle itself, the areas that were previously obscured behind the bumper. Now as you can see here, I'm spraying on a mix of snow foam, uh, which has also got some citrus grease in there as well. So once that's applied, I just give it uh, a little bit of time to loosen up some of the dirt. Obviously it's not a, an area of the body that's normally exposed, so once that starts to take effect, I then agitate the area with a brush. Obviously we want to re um, remove any general road grime here and potentially any road salt as well. Obviously this was done in the summer, but um, again, over winter, road salt and grime could all get accumulated behind here. Again, I'm just going to give it another quick coating as much as anything, um, just to sort of lubricate the area and stop, stop the... Um, foam drying. Once that was done it was rinsed down and I actually applied a liquid wax to the area um, as I dried it off with a microfiber. As you can see that's looking much better already. Same behind the tail lights. So here we're applying the clear lacquer once the paint's had time to dry. After a few coats of uh, clear we can then remove the masking. We're back out with the wet and dry, this time going with a much finer paper. I've actually um, lubricated as well, just to uh, just with water. And what we're doing here is actually is a process known as flatting. Um, when you when we sprayed the lacquer on, we've been left with quite a, a rough surface, uh, quite speckled. So we um, use the wet and dry to try and flat that. It will leave the paint surface looking quite dull initially. After we've completed the process of flatting, um, off camera, I actually went over with a red um, firmer pad 
and a 400 grit um, cutting paste. The reason for this is we want to try and remove all the fine scratches left from sanding. Once we've done that, we're on to the polishing stage, which you can see I'm doing now, with the softer pad and uh, 3500 grit um, cutting uh, polishing paste. And all we do is we've um, basically doing a cross hatch going up, down, left, right, just to make sure we don't miss any areas, and obviously carefully trying to go over any contoured areas as well. Then we just take a soft microfiber and all we're doing here is rubbing off any residue left from the polishing stage. Now while we're on the sub subject, just for the record, I am not a professional painter or detailer by any stretch of the imagination. Sadly, as is often the case with British summertime, the uh, sun was interrupted by a rainstorm and it lasted most of the afternoon. We even had a bit of thunder and lightning thrown in there as well. Thankfully the painting phase was all done, everything was dry, otherwise the, I think the moisture and humidity would have probably destroyed the finish. Um, but it just meant I lost a few hours and had to come back to this job a little bit later. So, a little bit later, so it's time to start putting things back together, so that trim piece that we talked about I'd removed, that's been cleaned well off the vehicle and simply now pushes back into place. So on inspection, um, as I say I'm not a professional painter and yeah, it doesn't show too much on camera but um, it's by no means a professional finish. All that rain soaked the back of the car so before I start putting things back on there, I've been back out with a microfiber just to dry things off before we start reassembling the vehicle. And finally it's time to start reapplying that bumper. I've left the arch liners in place. They have actually been out previously um, when I cleaned the arches um, all, all inside uh, and the liners. So the bumper sits on grooves at either side and just sort of clips into place. Once that's clipped in, you've got um, a couple of torque screws on top, just under where the light clusters are, and then you've got a couple of bolts underneath. Likewise, the lamps just, uh, the plugs clip back in and a couple of bolts and everything's back in place once again. If you've enjoyed this, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. There's more videos to come.